Hi, I'm Mark McKenna. I'm an electrical engineer. Ray Stevenson, electrical engineer. Ben Skiff, I'm a software engineer. And we we're going to talk about the Android <coughs> Bluetooth control LED coffee table we built for our senior design project. The next slide. So our table features a 36 pixel RGB LED grid. It's in a 6x6 six six array. Um, we have full control of the table over wireless Bluetooth using an Android app and an Arduino processor inside the table. Uh, the table supports five different display modes. Some of those display modes are an uh, pre preset animations, a sensor mode, a scrolling text mode, and then there's a few others we'll cover in the slides. We have, in our animation mode, we have 10 um, pre-built animations inside of there, and there you can select between them on the app, and you'll see, get to see a couple of those in the slides. And then also, <clears throat> over the Bluetooth, we have feedback from the table to the Android app that will display the status of the lights on the table. And for, in the sensor mode, we use infrared emitters, LED emitters and receivers to detect objects above the table. So for table construction, we went with a uh, square shape. Um, as you can see in the picture, it's a 10 by 10 matrix. That was our original goal. And due to time and uh, other problems we had, we had to downsize a little bit. Uh, the body of the table was uh, made out of aspen hardwood. There is a two layer shelf. Uh, the bottom layer supports the power supply and the uh, controller plus uh, the board that has all the uh, TLCs on it. Uh, the top shelf holds the uh, 10 by 10 grid and all the PCBs that will light up eventually. And then the construction of the grid was uh, 18 uh, interlocking uh, lathes that were uh, separated so you can chunk them together. Uh, the power supply, we got a ATX 600 watt power supply. It's a little overkill, but we were able to repurpose an old computer supply to save us money and time. The PCB modules, uh, everything was done in multi-SIM. They are a one by one inch module uh, containing seven components. And then they have uh, seven lines coming off. And then uh, on J3 you have power ground, J2 you'll have the RGB, and uh, J1 is connects up to the IR diode and the IR receiver. Uh, the reason we decided to build the sensors was to save us uh, time as far as installing and making individual. Uh, we built one, one PCB and we were able to go ahead and mass produce and install everything. The IR emitter and receiver, uh, the IR receiver is a Vichy TSOP 4138, it detects a 38 kilohertz signal. And so in order to get that, uh, in order to receive that, we had to uh, have the IR emitters pulse at a 38 kilohertz signal, which is what reflects up, hits your hand or phone, and will reflect down to be picked up by the sensor. And then once the sensor picks that up, it will light the table, the individual uh, box that it's in. Okay, so inside the table, we use two different we use the Arduino as the microprocessor, and then we have two different ICs that control the data and the control of the LEDs and the sensors. The first one that we have inside is the TLC5940. It's a Texas Instruments controller, and it's a pulse width modulated LED controller with 16 outputs. The RGB LEDs each have three pins, so you need three outputs for one LED. That means that one one IC here can support five and a third RGB LEDs. So that means with our 36 pixels, we have seven of these in our table. And like I said, they're pulse width modulated. So the way you control the, if you were to control like the color of the LED, you change, you change the pulse width modulated signal that it sends to each individual pin of that LED. And that way you can get a color blend between um, your RGB primary colors. <clears throat> we control this chip or a spy bus, and these chips are also daisy chainable. If you look at the pinout, on pin 26, you'll see a serial in pin, and on pin, where's the serial out? Ah, 17, you'll see serial out pin. 
those are the two pins that are used for daisy chaining the devices. So when basically when you send over uh, information over the spy, it'll go it'll go through the first one, and then the first one will realize that that information is not um, basically for one of its outputs. So it will just shift it from the serial output into the next TLC in line. <clears throat> And another great thing about this chip, that the reason, one of the reasons why we used it is uh, it's got this IRF pin on pin 20, and that is for set, using a current limiting resistor for all your LEDs. So you only need one current limiting resistor for all the LEDs, uh, all the outputs on this, on this uh, IC. So instead of having 16 LEDs, or 16 resistors, you can go down to one. And so like I said before, the main reason for this chip and the one on the next slide is to reduce the pinout on the microprocessor. So instead of having the microprocessor have to worry about having a hundred, you know, parallel output or a hundred plus parallel outputs for each pin or LED, it just you just have the, the spy bus pins off the microprocessor, and then all that um, output data is processed by these chips. So then we'll go to the next one. The next one is going to be the 74HC165. It's an 8-bit shift register. And this is used on the IR sensor receivers. And the reason we use this chip is exactly the same as the reason we use the other one. It's to reduce the pinout on the microprocessor. <clears throat> this doesn't run over a special data bus. It just runs over serial. Um, and I have a bullet here. It gets, um, where did it go? OK, maybe it's on the other slide. Oh, yeah, right here. The total microprocessor pin utilization for all the sensors is reduced from 36 or originally we planned 100 down to just four. And so the pins that we use, the pins that are going to be used off the microprocessor that are important are this PL pin. And that is the way that this shift register works is the outputs of the sets of the of the sensors are connected to these D4 or sorry D0 through D7. Those are the inputs. And when you when you toggle this PL pin, it's going to lock the status of all those inputs into the shift register. And then, what you're gonna, and then what happens after that is you just you clock the register on the clock pin, and every time every clock signal is going to shift one output out of the out of the Q7 output. So basically, every time you clock, you get one serial output. And so what you need to do if you have 36 pins, you have to clock it 36 times, and that'll get you all 37 of your receiver outputs down on one, one pin. <clears throat> um, these are also daisy chainable, like the other ones, like the other chips. And the, the way you daisy chain these is this DS pin is a serial in pin, and so it's really simple. You just take the you take the output of your if you had two of them, you would take the Q7 of the second one and connect it to the DS of the first one. And then when when your clock cycle hit, you would just shift the the output of the second one into the DS of of the first one, and the DS is essentially just another input. <clears throat> And okay, and so like I said, these are used for the receivers. And just another um, cool thing that we did with the sensor mill, just to make it a little more accurate, is we took multiple samples uh, when we were taking our readings, and then those samples are just computed, and I think it looks for like a 90% positive rate before it'll actually turn on the sensor. So, so it'll actually take 10 samples before it will turn on or off the sensor. So that's actually, instead of, instead of 36 clock cycles, you have 36 times 10, 360 clock cycles, or clock pulses, just, just to see whether the sensor's on or not. But our processor's fast enough that you won't see too much delay in the sensors when it's used. Finally, for me, we have the, <coughs> the Arduino interface. And um, so, this is just sort of the data structures we use to control the LEDs. We, each uh, red, green, blue pin was just held in a structure, and then that we had a two by two array built up of that structure for, so we had a two by two, uh, two, a two dimensional array, six by six of that structure for our LEDs. And then basically you, um, I pre-programmed in all the, all the primary colors we wanted and some of the secondary colors we wanted. And that way, um, you can basically just tell, you could individually tell each LED what color you want it to be, or you could run a group and hit them all at the same time if you want them all to be the same color. Um, and then, 
in our text mode, we have uh, the alphabet lighting patterns, and we program those into the prog mode. Just um, so then, when you want to display the text, you just basically call the function that that loads that array into the into the um, the two D LED configuration structure, and it'll just set those lights for you. So the Arduino, like I said, it controls the TLCs that we talked about. It controls the shift registers, and it also controls the IR emitters. The IR emitters, like Mark said, are all, they're all pulsed in parallel at 36 kilohertz. <coughs> the Arduino outputs serial data over the it inputs it takes serial inputs over the Bluetooth for mode selection, and that's sent by the Android app. And also, it takes inputs when while it's in paint mode when you're changing the lights individually and manually. And then, like I mentioned before, when we have our, we have our um, reflection of the table status onto the app, that's, that status is also output from the table to the app or Bluetooth. <clears throat> and then these are just two previews of some of the modes we have. This was an animation mode where it's basically changing colors out from the middle. Um, and then that's the sensor mode. You can see there's someone's hand is over the table and then also the phone is an object over the table and then you can see the reflection on the tape on the phone you can see the LED status reflected by the sensor button. All right so I designed the uh, uh, Android interface. I designed it in Java and I used the uh, Android 3.2 Honeycomb API. I chose that because it covers over 80 percent of Android devices and it it also has a lot of modern functionality to it. Um, I also use the Amarino Bluetooth uh, API to have additional support for the Arduino communication. Um, I use the, the Eclipse um, IDE for Windows, and I also use AIDE, which is an Android-based IDE, so that way I could compile and run my uh, software on my phone and just kind of sped up the development process. Um, so I tried going for as clean and minimalistic of an interface as possible. So basically you can just search for a table, connect to a table, and then interact with the table. Um, and also it would say after you connect once uh, to a table, then it will save the table address so that way you can immediately connect the next time you run it. And uh, it will detect also if Bluetooth uh, device, or if your device is not Bluetooth compatible. And notify you of that. Also, if you don't have Bluetooth uh, activated on your device, it'll prompt you to try and turn it on. Uh, so for the Bluetooth, uh, for searching, you uh, it searches, it uses the um, standard uh, Android API for searching the area for uh, other Bluetooth devices. Um, after locating all the paired and new devices in the area, it will display them here, where you can select uh, which device you'd like to connect to, and it displays the, both the name and the MAC address. Um, and then actually uh, the connection to the table is through the Amarino API. Um, then after uh, connecting, it will save the MAC address for later use. Uh, messages to the Arduino are communicated in serial. Uh, so you're communicating one byte at a time, and uh, I designed my own custom message format in order to uh, communicate the messages necessary to change between the modes. Uh, also in paint mode, uh, it needs to be able to specify which row and column are used. And then uh, the RGB values we used were from 0 to 1365. Um, so here is just the, uh, kind of the instruction format that I used. I used a fixed uh, length message to help facilitate uh, fast communication. And uh, yeah, for the text mode, uh, it used uh, basically the same layout, but then just changed the mode bit at the start. And this is also uh, at the top uh, layout here is the same uh, format that's used to communicate from the Arduino back to the Android device. Uh, so after connecting to and uh, saving your uh, MAC address from the table, you then are transported to another uh, screen where you have a representation of the current state of the table. Uh, so as you can see here, it updates in real time. Uh, that 
I painted on there using the paint mode. Um, so I had to design my own custom tiles to represent the different uh, tiles of the table. Uh, then to select between the modes, uh, there are five different display modes. So that's the first uh, menu. And then after selecting a display mode, the second menu will update to have relevant sub-selections. Uh, for the first four modes, it's just selecting which color you would like. So there are eight basic colors. There are the white, black, and then the six primary additive colors. Uh, but also I added in a uh, possibility where you can select your own RGB values. So uh, if you select that, then you can set uh, your own values, preview them, and then click OK. And then it will save that for later. Uh, so you could go into paint mode, create your own custom color, paint around a little bit, switch colors, switch modes, and then go back and it would still save your custom color. Um, Uh, yeah, and then for the animation mode, you would just select animation from the first menu and then select which animation you would like from the second menu and then click apply selection. All right, I know we're kind of running late, so I'll hit this real quick. This is just some of the overview of what went right with our table. We got, all, we got our grid working, we got our Android app working, Bluetooth communication working really well, um, the IC integration went really well, and the animations were really nice looking and the table was very sturdy, sturdily constructed. We ran into major fabrication issues, which led us to have to downsize the scope of our table. Um, so that's why we ended up with 36 pixels instead of 100. And so some of those fabrication issues were wiring and uh, PCB modules breaking and that sort of thing. We ran into some time and budget constraints. The table was pretty expensive to build, especially once we started manufacturing PCBs and that sort of thing. So we had to omit some features that we had originally desired and another one expensive, like I said. So overall, our project was successful, and um, we learned a lot about stuff about, about integration and Bluetooth and, and uh, everything we talked about already. So any questions?